The former CEO of Daimler, Dieter Zetsche, back in 2016, made some public comments that he thought that Mercedes could surpass Tesla in less than 10 years as the leader in premium electric vehicles. So from 2016, less than 10 years later, let's just say by 2026, this would mean that if these comments were correct, that Mercedes would be the leader by 2026 in premium electric vehicles. So now that we are less than four years away from 2026, let's take a look at Mercedes EV plans and discuss how Mercedes is doing versus Tesla. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. According to this October of 2016 Business Insider article, when Mercedes unveiled their new EQ concept electric vehicle in the fall of 2016, then CEO Dieter Zetsche stated that Mercedes' goal was to be the leader in the luxury electric car market in less than a decade. Now, of course, if you go back to 2016, Tesla was quite a different company than it is today. And so to be fair to the CEO of Daimler back in 2016, the Mercedes versus Tesla competition looked a little closer back then than it is today. I mean, remember that the Model 3 officially started shipping to customers in 2017. The Model Y was of course not a thing yet. The Cybertruck had not been mentioned yet. There was no mention of the Semi, the brand new Roadster, and of course there were no 4680 battery cells. Now moving to the current CEO of Daimler, Ola Shalanius. In this April of 2021 Business Insider article, Ola Shalanius was quoted as saying, we are not afraid of a challenge. We are the challengers. And the author of this article surmises that quote, it seems as if Shalanius is addressing these words directly at Elon Musk and his car company, Tesla, which is rapidly building a factory in Daimler's front yard. However, I believe Mercedes should be afraid of Tesla coming to their home market the same way that BMW should be afraid of Tesla being in their home market as well, as we mentioned in a past video. But I want to go back to the original question, and that is, can Mercedes be the leader in premium electric vehicles over Tesla? And what does that even mean? A leader in what? Does Mercedes hope to bring out the best luxury EVs? Do they hope to have the highest volume? Do they think they have or will have the best technology? So let's take a look at these different factors of comparison between Mercedes and Tesla when it comes to electric vehicles. And we'll start by comparing Mercedes future and current electric vehicles to Tesla's vehicles and the ones that line up head to head. Mercedes does have several exciting electric vehicles coming out or available now in their EQ line. So let's start by comparing the vehicle that we have the most information on, and that's the EQS, and let's compare that to the Tesla Model S. So if you go over to fueleconomy.gov, which lists the EPA economy and range data for these vehicles, you can see that the Tesla Model S is much more efficient and offers a decent amount more EPA rated range over the Mercedes-Benz EQS. When it comes to the base MSRP before you add delivery fees, taxes, and other upgrades, you can see that these vehicles are very similar in price. If you take a quick look at the performance differences, you can see that the Tesla Model S is a much quicker electric vehicle and really embarrasses the Mercedes EQS on a track. When it comes to charging speed, the Mercedes EQS is no slouch. However, due to better efficiency with the Tesla Model S, at the end of the day, more miles are being added per minute of charging with the Model S over the Mercedes EQS. So the Model S is the leader when it comes to charging speeds. When it comes to shared premium features, there are a large number of shared features between the Model S and the EQS. I would call them both luxury electric vehicles. However, the Mercedes EQS does have some exclusive features not available with the Model S. For instance, with the EQS, you can get optional massage seats. In addition, you can upgrade the EQS to have ventilated power and heated rear seats. And while the Model S does have ventilated front seats and heated rear seats, you can't get ventilated rear seats for the Model S. And one of the most unique features about the EQS is the huge 56 inch curved glass 
instrument panel that includes a driver's display, a center infotainment screen, and also a passenger display screen. The Mercedes EQS does have nicely designed software and allows for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connectivity. Nonetheless, the Tesla Model S also has some exclusive features not offered on the EQS. The Tesla Model S has a large 17 inch central infotainment screen. And thanks to the PlayStation 5 level processing power of this infotainment system computer, you're able to play quite a few games with the Tesla Arcade. There's also Tesla Theater, which allows you to stream videos through Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, YouTube, etc. Then there's other software features like Tesla's dash cam recorder, Tesla's sentry mode, and then other miscellaneous modes like camp mode and dog mode. In addition, while it's taking longer than I believe Tesla would have liked, they still claim that the Tesla Model S and all their vehicles that are being sold today have all the hardware that will be necessary for full self-driving once they solve the software problem and once they release that out with a future software update. So in the end, while some people might argue that the Model S is not a premium electric vehicle, it obviously is. It has a lot of premium features. It's a very nice interior in the Model S. However, nonetheless, when you look at the interiors, the EQS does have a little bit more premium interior. And so it is a little bit more premium of a feel in the interior. So I guess Mercedes does have that slight edge over the Model S, but when you put it all together, I think a lot of people would rather have the technology aspect of the Model S, the performance aspects of the Model S. And I think overall, the Model S is a better electric vehicle than the EQS. Then you of course have the EQB coming from Mercedes, which is a direct competitor to the Model Y. According to Mercedes, the EQB is coming to the USA in the second half of 2022. We do not yet know the price point to compare that to the Model Y. However, Mercedes has said that the EQB will seat five as standard and will have a seven seat option like the Model Y offers. According to estimates, it should offer around 260 miles of EPA rated range once those numbers are available. Of course, this is quite a bit lower than the Model Y, which offers up to 330 miles of EPA rated range. The EQB should be able to charge from a 10% to 80% state of charge in just over 30 minutes, which is roughly the same as the Model Y. However, the EQB will have quite a bit less cargo room than the Model Y, offering around 60 cubic feet of cargo space, as compared to the Tesla Model Y, which offers just a bit over 76 cubic feet of cargo space in the 5C configuration. There's also the Mercedes EQE, which should come out in 2023, and that's a direct competitor to the Model 3. Once again, we do not yet know the price of this vehicle, but Mercedes does say that it should have a 90 kilowatt hour battery, which is larger than the current Model 3 battery. Mercedes also mentions that it should be able to charge from 10% to 100% in around 30 minutes when connected to a DC fast charger, which would actually be a little bit faster than the Model 3 when it comes to charging. Mercedes also mentions that it should offer four wheel steering with a rear axle steering moving up to 10 degrees. And unlike the Model 3, the EQE should offer air suspension and an adaptive damping system. Then of course there's the EQC which is available in Europe right now but it will not be available in the United States till 2025. However with the prices that we have for instance in the UK it is priced just a bit higher than the Tesla Model Y and it apparently offers less range. In addition coming later in 2022 to the European market will be the EQA compact crossover SUV from Mercedes. Also, Mercedes will be officially unveiling on April 19th the EQS SUV, which is the SUV version of the EQS sedan that we talked about earlier. And this should be Mercedes' answer to the Model X. Also coming sometime in 2023 will be the EQE SUV, which will be a crossover SUV version of the EQE sedan. And likely sometime around 2024, Mercedes should bring out the EQG electric version of the G-Wagon or a G-Class SUV. When it comes to Tesla's future electric vehicles, there is an exciting lineup for Tesla coming like the Cybertruck, which should be in production next year. The Roadster, of course, the new Roadster, which should be in production next year. And then the Tesla Semi, which should also be in production next year. So on a surface level, when you compare these vehicles, Mercedes versus Tesla, Mercedes may have a slight edge when it comes to some of the premium features that they offer, especially in their interiors. However, overall, I believe it's clear that Tesla's electric vehicles are better in most other categories 
And when it comes to just your average, everyday premium electric vehicle, I for one would rather have a Tesla vehicle. Do let me know if you'd like to see some more detailed comparisons between the Mercedes EVs and Tesla's EVs in a separate comparison video. Let me know in the comments section below if you'd like to see that from me. So as I've mentioned, overall, I believe Tesla does offer better premium electric vehicles. However, does Mercedes have the chance to surpass Tesla in volume? Well, first of all, if you look at total global sales for the company, including all of Mercedes sales, not just electric sales, but internal combustion engine vehicles, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, and their battery electric vehicles, if you combine that all together, in 2021, Tesla sold almost 50% as many vehicles as Mercedes did globally. And if you go to the Mercedes parent company and you go to market share in the United States only, Tesla was just slightly behind Daimler when it comes to market share in the full year of 2021. I'll talk about Mercedes electric vehicle sales in just a minute, but beyond that, even if we talk about all vehicle sales from Mercedes, I think it's very possible that Tesla could deliver somewhere around 75% as many vehicles as Mercedes in 2022. And it seems very likely that Tesla will surpass Mercedes in global sales as early as 2023. When you move this comparison to just battery electric vehicles being sold by Mercedes versus Tesla, according to my research in 2021, Mercedes sold around 58,000 battery electric vehicles, which is about 6% as many as Tesla. And I think it's very possible that in 2022, Mercedes will deliver somewhere around 100,000 battery electric electric vehicles globally. And if Tesla hits somewhere around 1.5 million electric vehicles being sold in 2022, that would account for around 6.7% as many electric vehicles, battery electric vehicles being sold by Mercedes as Tesla. Now, of course, that's the current look, but what about a few years in the future? What are Mercedes future goals versus Tesla's future battery electric goals? Well, of course, there's a tweet that I've mentioned multiple times, but in September of 2020, Elon Musk mentioned that he did see Tesla reaching somewhere around 20 million vehicles per year, probably before 2030. In addition, Tesla seems to be looking forward to around 50% or greater growth year over year. And if that does happen, it's very possible that what Elon Musk predicted would be possible. So Tesla has some really large goals when it comes to electric vehicle sales and production. And they apparently are setting up the behind the scenes, the battery supply, building factories, very efficient factories that they're actually going to need to be able to produce this many electric vehicles. So it's not just all hype. There's actually substance behind that hype. And I believe Tesla will produce somewhere around this many electric vehicles in the future. When it comes to Mercedes and their future plans, according to this article from The Street, Mercedes recently opened a new battery factory in Bibb County, Alabama. This article also mentioned that they will produce electric vehicles at this plant in Alabama as a part of a global push to produce all electric vehicles at seven locations on three continents. Then according to this Forbes article from October of 2021, Mercedes mentioned that their plug-in hybrid electric vehicle and battery electric vehicle sales should account for 50% of their global volume by 2025. And this article also mentioned that by 2030, they want to switch to entirely battery electric vehicles except for small markets where it doesn't make as much sense. This article goes on to say that on the battery side, they plan to set up around eight new gigafactories, which will include four in Europe and one in North America. And when it comes to how many batteries they're going to be able to produce according to their plan, this automotive news article from March of 2022 mentions that with these eight cell factories from Mercedes, they should have the capacity eventually to produce 200 gigawatt hours of batteries per year by the end of the decade. So here's a rough summary of Mercedes future EV plans. Their plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles should be 50% of their global volume by 2025. So that could be somewhere between one to two million electric vehicles. Remember, not just battery electric vehicles, but also including plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. In addition, by 2030, most of their markets should be all electric, meaning all battery electric vehicles, according to them, which means they could be selling somewhere around two to three million battery electric vehicles by 2030. They mentioned that they want to have seven factories producing 
EVs. They're working towards having eight new battery gigafactories producing around 200 gigawatt hours of batteries per year collectively. And if you do the math, 200 gigawatt hours of batteries per year is enough for around 2.5 million EVs being produced each year, assuming an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, which of course goes right in line with the estimates that I mentioned earlier of Mercedes delivering somewhere between two to three million battery electric vehicles per year by 2030. When it comes to battery production for Tesla, they are shooting for around three terawatt hours of battery capacity being produced per year by 2030. So in the end, these EQ electric vehicles from Mercedes do appear to be very great electric vehicles and should compete very well on the electric vehicle market. And it can definitely be argued that Mercedes EVs are and will be more luxurious than Tesla EVs. So in luxury, I guess they do lead Tesla. However, when it comes to better everyday EVs, which include things like range, efficiency, charging network, charging speeds, software, and useful features, I believe that Tesla EVs are better. And when it comes to technology, Tesla offers better technology. And as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to total volume of EVs, Mercedes will not even be close to Tesla based on what we can see. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below what you think about these comparisons and what you think about Mercedes versus Tesla. Would you rather have one of these Mercedes EQ electric vehicles or the comparable Tesla model? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.